Hi everyone, so as you probably know, Final Cut Pro was released on iPad this week and I wanted to do a quick little tutorial to show you exactly how to use the live drawing feature in Final Cut Pro on iPad. This is exclusive to the iPad's version of Final Cut Pro and it's such an amazing feature because it's actually a hard thing to go and edit if you don't have this feature on your editing software. So yeah, it's amazing that it's built in and I'm gonna be covering exactly how it works um, and how you can use it in your videos. So in my project timeline here, you will see I have just a bunch of random clips that I kind of just put together to show you exactly how to use the live drawing feature. So um, obviously depending on your clip, that's gonna determine what you actually write and do, whether it's doodles, whether it's just writing some text, right? Whether it's making like a little intro, whether it's like writing a title for your video, um, it really just depends. So say for this first clip, I wanna make like a, a title for a day in the life video with this cool little shot here. What I can then do is go to the life drawing section up here. So it's this pencil icon. Um, and here we have all our little tools that we can use. So the first one here is pen um, and it really is just like a solid line and it is pressure sensitive so you can have thinner lines and thicker lines. Um, you can also adjust the opacity here um, so how see-through you want it to be or not. And also you can adjust the thickness. The next one here is the highlighter. It is naturally um, see-through. So as you can see there, like most normal highlighters, um, but you can adjust the opacity again to be higher um, and you can adjust the thickness of the strokes. Then the last option here for drawing is the pencil tool, which again can adjust the opacity of. This has a more textured feel um, and you can easily just draw. I do feel like it's a little, a little bit hard to see sometimes. Let's see if we drag the opacity up. It's a bit better, but yes, that is the three pens. Then we have here the eraser tool. So if you have something drawn, you can easily use the eraser tool to erase. You can have different options. So pixel eraser erases exactly where you put the eraser and stroke or object eraser erases the entire stroke that you made um, so that is an option for you then we have here the lasso tool so this is helpful if you've drawn something um, and you want to reposition it so i want this flower not there i just select it with the lasso tool and then i can move it around to where i actually want it so that's really helpful and the last one we have here is the ruler so you can have this here to make sure you're writing like a straight line or if you wanna draw a line along the ruler, draw a line, which is really helpful. You can even see the width of your line, how long you're making it, which is really cool. Um, or, or you can just like have that there so you can kind of just write on top of it to make sure you're writing more straight so like that. So those are all the tools. Now let's actually get to drawing something, writing something. So like I said, this would be like a day in the life. So let's quickly write that out. Again, I can readjust with the lasso tool, select something, um, make sure I'm putting it to where I actually want it to be. So now that I'm done drawing that, I'm just gonna move this to the start of my clip and let's play that back and see how it's turned out. So something that is really cool, you can actually adjust the length of the animation basically. So this is very fast. I think um, we can have it a bit longer. So you just go to selecting your clip here and make sure you have the inspect option turned on. And then here you'll see options draw on and you can adjust how long you want it to take to draw on. So let's go for five seconds and see how that looks. Okay, so our clip is actually too short, so let's just lengthen that up. So that is how it turns out. It's really, really cool um, and it looks really nice. And it gives a more personal feel because it is your handwriting. It's very personal to you. So that is how you can go about creating your little doodles. Um, so this was just with like writing things out. You can also just go ahead and add some doodles to things. So here I have a clip of me petting this cute little golden doodle. Um, so I can also just go ahead and add some cute little doodles to this 
to add some more character to the clip. So let's go ahead and choose our tool. I'm gonna try the pencil tool, see if I can just like do some things here. So once you've drawn that, again, you can go ahead and play that back. So those are the doodles that are over the dog. I think it's really cool to just add these little things to your clips. Now I wanna show you when you're animating um, your drawings um, to kind of follow a subject or things like that, just to make it feel like it's moving with your video clip and it's not just a static drawing. So we're gonna go to a clip that's this gonna work with the most. So here I have a shot of my Kindle and say I want to write the name of the book that I'm reading, but I don't want it to be the entire duration of the clip because at a certain point I pan my clip to there. Um, so then it's not going to be relevant to have the name of the book. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly draw my little thing that I want to show the name of the book for. So let's just make like a little drawing. Also, I forgot to mention when you have the lasso tool selected, what you can also do is change the color of your drawings. Um, so that's also really helpful if something just doesn't look quite right to you. And um, then I'm happy with my animation and let's see the timing. So here I'm moving away as you can see, but the text is still following. So we're gonna go ahead and make some animations um, and using keyframing for that. So keyframing is always something that's difficult to explain, um, but I'll try my best to do a good explanation. So. Make sure when you have your clip selected, you have animate selected down here. Um, you can also have your inspector open here at the side as well. So we're going to be playing around with the positioning of this little drawing. Um, so if you're going to be using the inspector, you're going to focus on the positioning section here. But we're going to go to animate, like I said, have that on. And here at the bottom right side, you have this little diamond. And this is your keyframe. So as you can see, I have my first keyframe set. But next to that, we're gonna select format and we're gonna select position, just to make sure that we are editing the position and we are formatting and keyframing the position, not the actual rest of the clip. So we have position selected. Let's add our first keyframe. Um, and then I'm just gonna add a keyframe right here and move our text up. So for the entire duration from the first keyframe to the second keyframe, it's gonna take that entire duration to animate from our first point to the second point. So as you can see here, that's how long it's gonna to take to make that animation because that's when we set our keyframes. I hope that makes sense. Um, yes, so what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that my clip here is moving with my clip, my camera work, to follow my Kindle and not move like that, just stagnant on one spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, right here, set my first keyframe. Then I can either use my jog wheel here or I can move my finger throughout the timeline, but I feel my jog wheel is more precise. And then whenever something is moving, so as you can see, my clip is still fine here. Then we're moving a bit down. I want my text to move down as well. So I'm just gonna go to right here and move it to be still in place like that. Let's go to our second frame still moving down, we'll move it back to where it has to be. You can even do this with scaling as well, but still moving. Still moving, we'll still be adjusting throughout our entire clip. So here it is standing still. So until it moves again, I'm just gonna keep moving around. So right here, I'm gonna add just another keyframe move through okay it's moving away but we're still going to be adjusting our little thing to stay in place until we don't see anything anymore i'm just gonna stop here with the keyframing so now let's play this back and you can see how many keyframes i've put here quite a lot so let's play that back and see how that looks It looks okay, it's a bit jittery, but also um, if you pay more attention to doing this precisely and not in a rush like I'm doing right now, you will get like a really cool like feel of it. But I still think this is really helpful to do with these drawings and things to make it just a bit more, less 
static and moving with your video clips. So that is also something you can do with a live drawing feature if you want to. Um, it's a really cool thing to do. The last thing I want to show you is if you have a clip like this, so that, which has a very predominant subject, you can quickly duplicate this clip. So I'm just going to quickly hold down and click copy and then I'm just going to paste it. Um, then I'm just going to move this clip directly over our original clip. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a scene removal mask to our first clip here. So at first it's not going to look like it's doing anything, but now I'm going to quickly add in some drawings. So I'm just going to quickly write something. So here you see I have written golden doodle over top of the dog, but if I don't want this to cover him up, first I'm just going to reposition it so that it's a little easier to see. Okay, I'm going to move this live drawing just behind the top clip so that it's between the two clips. So now, since our subject is selected, our subject is going to be over our drawing. So the drawing is not going to be over him, which is so cool and gives such a cool effect. And you can do this with anything like me sitting right, right now. I can add some drawing with between me and my background kind of, if it does a good job at removing the background, that is to say. Um, but if you have like a clear distinction between you and the background, you can make some cool effects with this to kind of nest your drawing between your subject and your background. You can do this with text as well, but I'm just showing like the drawing situation that it can do this as well. So that's everything I wanted to share with you about live drawing on the iPad in Final Cut Pro. I know I didn't have to go and make this a very long video. I could just show you how to draw and leave it at that. But I wanted to show you some scenarios where you could use the live drawing and be more creative with it than just drawing over your videos, using keyframing, using like this cool little behind the subject thing. Just be more creative with it um, than just simply drawing over your videos. But still, it's a really cool thing that they didn't include that we now can do this. So yeah, that is live drawing on Final Cut Pro on the iPad. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments down below how you're planning on using the feature and if it's something that you will be using or not. Um, yes, leave those in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video and found help with it, give it a thumbs up. And yeah, just thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you and I will see you in my next video. Bye.